One Piece chapter 1083 spoilers are out and let's dive right on into it. So first of all, we got a cover, a chapter cover of Do Flamingo. He makes his interest, he makes his entry back onto the cover of One Piece. Now, are we getting a flashback? Is it are we getting what, what are we getting with Do Flamingo? I don't know. It has yet to be revealed. And of course, I guess we'll have to wait until the chapter comes out or some spoilers give us some some sort of hints. So uh, the chapter starts off, it says the chapter of 1082 ends with Sabo and Monkey D Dragon and Imperial Ivankov and Sabo will, will talk about everything that happened at the Rivera beginning of the flashback. OK, so they're going to have this conversation. So the information about the eight kingdoms that oppose the world government because of what happened to the kingdom of Luzlia. These eight kings refuse to pay tax to the world government. Therefore, the government decides to send holy knights to deal with them. The number of holy knights is nine. Hmm. So here we go again, guys. Oda has introduced new characters into the to the to One Piece, and that is if you don't know about anything about an author or writing a story or, or a book, one thing you do not do is you do not introduce new characters toward the end of a book because that causes confusion, which tells me that this may not be the end or the last saga of One Piece. If it is the end of the the or if it is the last saga of One Piece, Oda has a a funny way of saying it because. That's something you don't do. You do not introduce new characters at the end of a story. And with these holy knights, they could be anybody, anybody. Um, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a uh, Edo Tensei Jutsu, you know, from a reanimation of the of Goldie Rogers himself coming back and he's fighting for the world government. And we get to see just how strong and powerful he was without a white beard to be there to check him. I don't know. It could be a lot of stuff going on. But let's continue moving forward. Sabo with Kurosu, Morley and Lindbergh against the Admirals, Aramaki and Isho. Wow, okay. In the fight, we will witness Kurosu shooting crosses or uh, crows at Isho while Morley managed to stab Aramaku, Aramaki. Also, the CPO organization intervened in a battle which is in possession of Nefertari Vivi. Okay. They're in possession. So somehow, CPO organization intervened in the battle and took possession of Vivi. I don't know how they do that. I guess we're going to have to see because, um, like I said, this is a flashback. So they're right now in the memory of CPO actually kidnapping Vivi. So according to Sabo, the main mission was successfully accomplished in enabling them to declare war against the world government directly by burning the world government flag. And even Bartholomew Kuma was freed. So Sabo made his way into the Revere and managed to burn the flag successfully declaring war against the world government. So now you got the revolutionary army officially declaring war against the world government. And now it's time for them to make their move. So let's move right along. Monkey D dragon says the real war against the world government has now begun because of the action of the Holy Knights. The revolutionary army has started its first move in the battle by destroying supply ships headed for Mirajar. All right. So now these Holy Knights have made their move and apparently Monkey D Dragon has not shown himself or has not even decided to engage or seen it worthwhile to engage with uh, the pirate like Whitebeard because that's not his enemy. He feel that his real enemy are these holy knights and the world government. So now we got some type of understanding why Dragon has been setting back idle and I haven't been and just chose not to attack anybody other than, you know, the world government because he's waiting on these hiding holy knights to show themselves, which makes all the more sense now. Now, the interesting part now, what are these guys compromise of? What type of fighting skills do they have? What type of abilities do they have? And how strong are they actually with them when they have to have a uh, warlord system to counterbalance the emperor of the seas? So th that's going to be an interesting dynamic. So let's keep going, moving right along, guys, because we're almost at the end of this chapter. We see a news paper in which the news of the corpse of King Nefertari, uh, Nefertari Cobra, King of the Kingdom of the Ar Arabasta, is present, presented. And next to him is the main accused, Sabo. We also see King Cobra heading to meet the Gorose. And before he does to go, and before he goes to them, he asks Pell and Chaka, the guards of the Kingdom of Arabasta, to take care of his daughter. No break next week. Okay. Wow. Additional info. We we see good action from Karasu. Okay, I don't, I still don't, I can't put the name to it. A future story is preparing for a huge attack. The Revolutionary Army's captain's face was shocked and then cut to Sabo when we don't see what happened. Hmm. So, Fujitora is back there. He's, he's cooking something up because he feels that he's, his justice is different from what has been currently in place. 
with the world government and the army. So he has his own ideal of justice. And I think he's finally moving on that. Good to him. Good for him. Herbal's on the floor and dead next to his wheelchair and Sabo is next to him. So the picture from the newspaper that says Sabo killed Cobra looks real and it's not a drawing. Probably Morgan took the picture after Gorse killed Cobra. And when Sabo arrived, Sabo was shocked when he read the news. One of the holy knights in the middle looks like Shanks. It has the same clothes, same sword, and also the same location of the sword. One of the holy knights has a cowboy hat. One has horns. Forest fruit is the susu. No me. The soot fruit looks like a logia. Wow. Okay. So now I'm starting to get some type of retrospect of what I was saying earlier. Maybe one of these guys is a, a reanimation of the uh, of Goldie Rogers himself. We don't know that. And if that could be possible, if that is possible, if Sue decides to take it that route where he brings back a Goldie Rogers versus Luffy, an all out war. And he said this, he said that we would be the, the, the impel down arc along with the, uh, he said that this war would make that war looks like child's play. And now I st I'm starting to see where he's coming from with this. And if I'm older, why not? It's your story, dude. Go for it. If it works, it works. You're going to know the One Piece community is pretty much, we're loving it. So we're not going to say anything about it because we're the fans of it. But we, there may be slight, a slight uh, bit of ridicule from the, some of the fans who are highly critical of an anime or a manga like yours. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you like videos and content like this about One Piece, where I'm talking about everything One Piece and anime, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. But then thank you for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.